Morning, Year 4. Happy Wednesday. We're going to start a new traditional story today. We're going to look at the proud son. Okay? This story comes from Indonesia. So while we're on that, I want you to answer these two questions here. So the first question I want you to answer is, write a sentence to describe the purpose of a traditional story. Off you go. Next one, write a sentence about the human qualities an animal character had in a traditional story you know. So what's a traditional story you know where one of the animals had some human qualities? Off you go. <clears throat> so you've got a booklet called The Proud Son. Look at the title and the illustration, which is here. Now, think about what might this story be about? Where is it from? And why might the sun be proud? Have a think about that. Off you go. Now, just have a scan. So just basically get the proud sun and just flick through it. See if you can identify any unknown words. So if you've got any unknown words, you might like to write them down, okay? You might like to look up what those words actually mean. Over here is a list of some words from the Indonesian language, okay? Or words that are relevant to Indonesia or words that are a little bit more complex, okay? So if you didn't know some of those words, there are the meanings there. Next, I'm going to play you a couple the of videos, son. and I'll see you shortly. Long, long ago, in a small village of Sayajalek in Sumatra, there lived a poor widow named Kalia, and her only child, a son called Wayan. They lived together happily in a bamboo hut at the edge of their small rice field. Although Wayan's mother was poor, she proudly cooked him the best food. Come, Wayan, I have your favourite jackfruit and fish curry to eat. Or she would eat for his leftovers. As he got older, Wayan expected the best of everything. Kalia struggled to provide the best sarong, headscarf and sandals for her son to wear. She lavished him with praise, attention and affection, cradling him to sleep every night while singing softly to him. When the boy turned 15, he pleaded with his mother to let him go to sea on board one of the big ships that came into Sayajalek's harbour. His mother feared he would be drowned at sea, but she could not refuse her son. I must leave you. I wish to seek my fortune and see the world, Wayan announced. Despite her breaking heart, his mother had no alternative than to let him go. Soon the young man set sail aboard a rigger bound for foreign lands. Every day the lonely widow prayed to Allah to look after him. Her one wish was that she would be able to embrace her son again before she died. Years passed and Kalia received no word from her son. But one day, some villagers ran to her hut and shouted, Kalia, your son has returned! A fleet has sailed into harbour and we have seen him! The overjoyed widow rejoiced and helped by the villagers, made her way down the steep slope to the harbour. Five impressive ships were anchored there. Along the deck of the biggest ship strode a handsome, strong and magnificently dressed man. Could this be my son? thought Kalia, her face beaming with pride and joy. Surely he is too proud, too handsome, too wealthy to be my boy. Wayan, my son! Kalia screamed excitedly 
as she stumbled across the plank to the deck. You have come home to your mother. Slowly, the proud man turned. Before him, he saw an old, wrinkled and poorly dressed peasant woman. He turned away from her in shame and in fear that his crew, for he now owned the fleet of ships, would realise his humble origins. Never have I seen this woman before, Wayne lied to his crew. Get her off my ship. Don't you recognise me, my son? implored Kalia. Has your old mother changed so much in all these years? Wayne gave his mother a shove towards the gangplank and onto shore and issued an order to the crew to set sail. Sadly, Kalia watched the fleet sail out of the harbour. Tears welled in her eyes as she started her slow walk home. Quite suddenly, Kalia realised that her son had cast her off and was ashamed of her now as he was wealthy. All at once, she realised he had always been selfish and concerned only for himself. Throwing herself down, with anger rising in her chest, she prayed to Allah to punish her wicked son. A rumble of thunder was heard as the fleet of ships stood ready to set sail. Darkness rolled in, and with it came a mighty wind. Waves taller than the tallest ship tossed the fleet around like coconut shells. The ship which contained Wayan was thrown with a terrible force against the rocky cliffs. All aboard perished. Today, visitors to Sage Lake Harbour notice the rusty hulks of the ships lying near the shore. They stand as a reminder that we must repay love with love, not scorn. Today, you are looking at a traditional story from Indonesia. It is called The Proud Sun. This video will help you to complete the work in The Proud Sun booklet. The introduction is the first paragraph in the story. It introduces the reader to the setting, which is the place, it is said, the where, and the time, or the when, and also the characters. The very first words, long, long ago, tell the reader the time or when the story is set. This is an old story from a very long time ago. The very next part lets the reader know the setting or where the story happens. In a small village, of Sejelek in Sumatra. We also know they live in a bamboo hut at the edge of a small rice field. Are you getting a picture in your mind of where the story is set? And the characters. The storyteller tells us that there is a poor widow named Kalia and her only child, a son called Wayan. Wow! So much in the very first paragraph. Can you see any words here that show that Wayan was spoiled by his mother? Well, he expected the best of everything. She lavished him and cradled him to sleep. He certainly was spoiled, wasn't he? How does this make you feel about Wayan? Do you feel happy for him, or think you should not expect the best of everything? There are some pronouns in this section of the story. Do you remember what pronouns are? Remember, they are used to replace the names of the characters. So instead of saying Kalia or Wayan all the time, the author can write he or she or him or her. Can you see any pronouns in this part of the story? I can see he, which refers to the boy Wayan. And here is another one, him. Can you see any more? And what about this great word pleaded? It certainly sounds a lot better than asked, doesn't it? It really makes us think he is begging. Why do you think the story says pleaded instead of asked? Can you see the quotation marks in this part of the story? They let us know the words that are being said, so we need to look out for these to find the direct speech. I can see some here and here. They show us the start and finish of the direct speech. So Wayan announces, 
I must leave you. I wish to seek my fortune and see the world. We know in this section of the story that Carly is very sad. The storyteller uses words like her breaking heart to let us know this. How does this make you feel about Carly's reaction to Wayan leaving her? Does it make you feel happy for her, or sad? Do you think she will be lonely now? Now you need to read sections five, six, seven, and eight. So, how do you think Carly would be feeling about her son returning? Do you think she would be worried, or sad, or happy? And did you notice the time words in paragraphs five, six, and seven? I can see the words soon. Can you find some more? They are often at the beginning of the sentence, and they really help the reader to know when things happened and in what order. In this section, I can see a great noun group that is used to describe Kalia. Remember, noun groups consist of an important noun, the head noun. And one or more describing words or adjectives. The adjectives give more information about the head noun. They help the reader to visualize the characters, events, and objects in the story. In this section, the head noun is widow, and the describing word is overjoyed. We also include the word the in our noun group, so the noun group is the overjoyed widow. The author has also used a very powerful verb to explain how Kalia felt. This verb is rejoiced. This verb makes us realize that Kalia is very happy and is celebrating the return of her son. In the next lesson, you will complete more of your booklet. You will not have a video to step you through the work, so remember the following: noun groups consist of an important noun, the head noun. And one or more describing words or adjectives. The adjectives give more information about the head noun. You will need to look for the noun and then find the adjectives that describe the noun. Remember, these noun groups are used by the storyteller to make you feel a certain way about the character. It helps you to get a picture in your mind of what the characters look like and the type of person they are. Verbs and verb groups are very powerful too. They can really give a good idea about what is happening, how characters are feeling, and how people are saying things. They really help us to know how characters behave and why they behave that way. Pronouns are used to replace the nouns under words like he, she, him, or her. Adverbs give more information about verbs. They often end in ly. Some examples are sadly, quickly. Text connectives of time help the reader to know when events are happening and the order in which they happen. They are often at the start of sentences. Wait. Good luck completing your booklet. Now the final thing you need to do, guys, is you need to go to your proud son booklet, have another read over it, and then. Go through the guided readings and do the first nine paragraphs. Okay? So you've got to identify some things about the orientation. You've got to do some underlining and some explaining. You're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way down to here. Once you finish paragraph nine, that is your English lesson for the day. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in maths.